Hello and welcome to the sixth part of the ETS2 Agency Driver ser series. Now this is a series where I'm picking up in the city where I left off each time using a different make and model of the truck so I'm covering them all that's available in the game at the present time and yeah, tell you a little bit about the trucks uh, what option some of the options that they come with etc and so based on now that I am nature of the trucks I'm not sticking to identical horsepowers between them or gearboxes possible I'm just giving you my opinions on the trucks and telling you a little bit about them so today's truck is a DAF XF it has the 530 horsepower and it is a 12 speed gearbox now we'll be driving this in a manual um, today's journey is taking us from Rostock in Germany to Hanover in Germany I oh, shall just bring the map up now to show you the approximate route and if I need to make any changes so support of those two there right so today's journey is 209 miles so without further ado I'll get started then I'll tell you a little bit about the I know in some of these I haven't told you much about the history of the company that makes the trucks but I will cover them as best as I can so ready to roll just get started here it'll suit so this journey should cover some daylight so the games as it come no mods on it at all turn left and then turn right just made a few turn changes left. in uh, gameplay to make it a little bit more realistic like uh, realistic fuel consumption and air brakes and things like that so talking about the history of DAF DAF trucks are the headquarters in Eindhoven which is in the Netherlands or Holland depending on where you are now they do Get ready to turn left. have a long association with uh, Britain as well because in Turn left. 1987, they merged with Leyland trucks to become Leyland DAF in the UK. Now, the vehicles were known as DAF everywhere else. So, and in 1992 or 1993, uh, DAF went into administration now there was a management buyout of the business and then they became daft trucks so and uh, in 1996 the Packard group acquired daft and Leyland trucks now Packard group also owns other famous brands in the truck simulators such as Kenworth and Peterbilt Again, so and they are still under the ownership of Packer and certain ones of the LF and CF range. I'm not too sure about the others. Are actually some of them are actually still assembled in the old Leyland plant in Lancashire, in Great Britain. So to Daff were quite initiative in that they had some of the first in the world regarding trucks obviously they were one of the first to launch a truck with the three wipers which was the F241 by the way if you go onto the forum there is a mod of the X of the F241 and it's by XPS 
You wait after that. And the DAF were also the first to introduce the turbo diesel intercooler, mainly in the F241 3600. Now, this engine was based on a Leyland 0.680 engine, and the Leyland engines actually a uh, few of the other manufacturers used the Leyland derived engine as well such as Bedford now they're an old British make now so so I covered the three wipers in approximately 1987 DAF launched the 95 and um, with uh, now through the 95's history they did some changes and upgrades to the base cab design and the cabin and then they become the DAF 9 XF 95 or 95 XF now the 95 XF with fuel change in that forms the basis of the 105 XF which the 105 is the other model of XF in the game so and then there's obviously some people know them as DAF XF, XF Euro 6 I've seen them referred to as the 106 as well so the game so now I do admit this I do have a very big soft spot for DAF, DAF trucks I just like them I don't know why so about the ones in the game there is three cabin options available they're all sleepers, there is a flat roof, there's a mid roof, uh, which is the space, or the super space, and then there's one with a higher roof. Now, the amount of tuning available on the DAF as regards customization to the outsides and extra tables and things is actually quite vast if you buy the DAF tuning pack DLC. So, basis of the DAFs in the game. In the XF, which the one I'm like driving here, the base engine which you can get is a 370, and the engine range goes all the way up to 530 horsepower. Now, on some of the engines, SCS did actually put Keep the right update and then exit right. 2017 engines in them, and the 2017 exit engines right. are like a dual torque. So there's Go two different on. torques available at different RPM levels. So uh, covers the engines. Uh, the chassis, well, it's usual choice: four by two, six by two, six by four, six by two four, with all the derivatives of the six by two fours amid the tags. The one, uh, uh, but the one I'm driving here today has a six by two four chassis. And the steering axle that's at the rear does not lift, so um, so trim levels. There's a few different trim levels available now. I admit the the wooden dash doesn't look quite right in this truck, but there's different levels of trim. So this will Gosh, be mind going the further up now with some trim levels get slightly different dials in, in them as there's different fonts and what have you on some of them now this is what I would call a flat one and there's ones that's a bit more shaped but the dashboard computer and things are exactly the same and all these trucks regardless of the trim level do come with the GPS is standard in them so DAF overall very competent truck not overstated overblown and they are one of the most popular trucks sold in the UK is it is the DAF brand now the say thing there's LF which is like more like box fans and uh, like flatbed rigids 
then you can get the CF which can be rigid or box span or whatever or articulated which the CF is smaller than what these are but the CF is not available in game as default you can get some mods of them but I've never found a good one of a CF yet that's free there is some payware ones but if you want pay mods you'll have to research yourself for them because I do not believe in paying for any mods and then there's these which is XF which I would say is one of the most popular backbones of like the British trucking industry throughout Europe now a lot of the firms that I've seen are either using about the 450 or 480 engine which is obviously the goal for that engine because it gives enough power and enough economy so, so the DAF in game is uh, reasonably is it's not the most economical truck but it is not far off the top of the economy stakes in trucks now I personally as I said right. And then exit right. I do like the DAF trucks so but series are being neutral and right. um, I have told um, not the previous episode you know I've listed some of the things I don't and don't like about them so that overall very good package bad point the trim level with the wooden dash bad the sat nav is a bit small now I'm driving all these trucks in the default seating position without altering them sat nav is a bit small a bit too low and if the light gets in them badly you struggle to see them so but it's not the worst sat nav in the game I've already covered that in the previous part which I think is the worst which is the one in the TGX Euro 6 so let's just bear with me a moment the DAF trucks uh, again are not the cheapest of vehicles they are in line with one of the most expensive one but I'm going to feature what's the most expensive starter truck in the game in a future episode that I think is way overpriced for what it is compared to the other model that's in the range so would I go DAF for a first vehicle in the game Yes I would because it, the entry level one is around the same horsepower as so the Renault truck is around about that. There's a few around that you can get with around about the same size engine as a 370 that this one comes with as a starter truck like I would rather buy one of these at 370 horsepower over the man TGX Euro 6360 horsepower because in my eyes it's a better laid out truck it's more positive on the road and keep right just about and it. then exit right really so and now I will exit right if you noticed uh, episode 3 is missing in the playlist that Next was turn left. a video on the Renault Premium now I do believe it's available in a poor quality but it's the audio quality on that actually I will maybe remake that one in future but it's down under poor quality if you're wondering where episode 3 is junction
with uh, is that even on? With most of these trucks in the game, you can't download some sound mods for them now. You can get sound mods for DAF. AVR does a free one, or you can go onto his website Gosh, or Facebook page and purchase an excellent sound pack for these now. I'm not running any of the sound packs in this, but you can get a stock sound version and there is an open pipe version available from Captain Creech Farm. Now you'll find his now Captain Creech Farm does have a YouTube channel at least videos of all the different sounds what they do in the game. And I believe Lean or and Oxygen's had hand in some of the sound mods as well for these. As well as you can get uh, re uh, Shumi's done a reworked version of the DAF XF which Gosh, gives please mind the speed limit. some even more options and uh, things on the trucks but as I say I'm just really neat stock standard Gosh, SCX trucks in this series so as you know the aim of this series is for me to test drive at least one of every make a model of truck in the game. There will be varying horsepowers and speed limit. varying gearboxes and varying loads, but um, now I've already covered the Scanny S next Cost. generation. Please Obviously, not this horsepower, but uh, had both the 450s in the Scanias and the DAF equivalent of this model and they are the DAF is more economical than the Scania 450 so don't want to get any speeding fines lose money off count here now in the all the versions again the UK truck simulator the get ready UK to right. truck simulator and German truck simulator the original version of ETS the DAF brand was known as DAV DAV, right. which I do possess a copy of the UK truck simulator and the original Euro truck simulator, so I may feature some of those videos in future. Now, I'm no good at merging videos, so they'll come as a separate part where I show trucks in those but that's a long way off in the future because but this series I'm doing now uh, as I'm recording this it's Tuesday the 16th of July and I still haven't uploaded the Man TGX video that will be up when this one comes out but recording on Saturday so because I've been recording and things for the idiot's guide the ATS idiot's guide getting on that but I will keep these videos coming on this service now over the past few videos that have released you have probably noticed a difference in the audio quality on them that is in no small part thanks to oddball76 which there is a link to his channel on my page and also I have a bit of help from English Bob which I will put his page on there at some point and also I'd like to recommend that you check out the other channel that's listed there is Race Sim he's not a nice guy he does uh, convoys now and again he lists things and he has his own VTC which I drive for Grant and Sons but I'll have to put the links in the, in the description at some point for these things for you to get on with so just finished the journey it's uh, in case you're wondering 
I have not scripted these videos in any way I'm just saying what I feel like when it gets to it but the daft facts I have had from various different sources some of them admittedly did come off Wikipedia and some off the daft truck websites themselves and some from old magazines and things like that so In case you're wondering, I cannot drive in real life, I'm not allowed to, I'm medically banned. Which means I have a condition that prevents me from getting behind the wheel. And, in case you see the dials and you're thinking, that, that comes up, right. average consumption is a bit right. high and he says you're economical. It's because I have it set on litres per 100 miles. If exit it was... Right litres per 100 kilometres it would be showing like as though it's Caution. more Mind the speed limit. as though it's doing less because for a hundred what it says there is litres per 100 miles it's showing there 48 point something bearing in mind 100 miles is 160 no, kilometres so no because Conversion is basically 8k to 5 miles or 1 mile equals 1.6k. I know some of you might pull up where saying it's actually 1.6 something. I know it's slightly over but it's the way to work it out easily. three miles away from our no no <laughs> I don't admit the last truck I drove in in this series was 16 speeds the 12 but I've also and then turn left. the same being on American truck simulator a lot recently and the gear layout is different in this truck so that's why occasionally turn left I going to neutral yes turn right if you played this game for a while you soon get used to it or if you haven't get you ready drive to manual turn left. you'll soon and there's these things diff turn slight left. differences between the games and the gearbox layouts in the truck Turn right. If I had a working webcam, I'd be able to show you roughly where they are, but if you're onto the internet, you can normally search what the gear patterns are for the trucks, or look at the diagram. Um, the Logitech G29, I have the gearbox set up on your range split ZF 12 speed and I use my pa paddles to between obviously the range Keep and the split right. and then turn right so and I've got it set up on the van on clutch or throttle so if I lift driving turn right I want to split it up or down lift foot off clock throttle and it automatically goes into the split turn right between the high and low Finally, when I click the pedal, uh, paddle to do it, anyway, I'm going to just park up now. So that's our journey complete in the DAF XF. And I will be back with another part featuring a different make and model of truck. 
picking up a load from Hanover and going to wherever the next destination is. So that's it for me. So if you're 10 10, I'm down and I'm gone. Please stay safe on them roads and take care. Goodbye.